Hey, this is Dave from Intronaut, and you're watching Interview Under Fire. All right, man. Welcome back to Texas. When was the last time you were here, and what do you think of when you hear the word? Texas. You already got a beer in your hand, so let's, let's <laughs> yeah. start this off. Although I got a little Modelo. Uh, backstage I had a Lone Star, so that's a little more Texas, I think. But uh, last time we were here, I want to say 2016 when we were touring on uh, the Direction of Last Things. I think we played right across the street at uh, Club Dada. That's right, okay. Um, and when I hear Texas, I think two things. I think open carry guns, and I think Franklin Barbecue. Or barbecue. Barbecue is always the first thing. Okay, barbecue. Yeah, yeah, always barbecue. But also guns. <laughs> and guns. Yeah, and beautiful women. There you go. Hey, Texas is the place to be for that. Yeah, right? it's one of, one of the places you to be. You kind of have just everything checked off when it comes to like, what do you think of when you hear the word Texas? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah, I've been and here you, before. <laughs> and then uh, you, you guys are from Los Angeles, California? We are from Los Angeles, That's yes. my second home. Awesome. I did, I did film for three years up there. Oh, cool, there. man. So right it's, on. It's, I love going there all the time. Excellent. So you guys have been at this for 16 years. You guys still get used to, I mean, you personally, do you get nervous before a show still? No. Ever? No. Any pre-show rituals that you guys do? Warm up. Just traditional as they come. Yeah, I mean, like, are we warm up, like all of us together playing the songs, like um, just with our guitars not plugged in and our drummer like plays on a chair or something. And yeah. we take a couple shots of whiskey and that's about it. So what's your favorite part about touring? You guys have been, you know, kind of just record release and then tour and then kind of just like a like cycle yeah i mean but between the last album and this one is by far the longest we've ever gone between touring cycles i mean for since the very beginning we were like record release tour write repeat um but uh i mean the favorite part about touring is playing the shows i mean all of us you know that's like all, that's also texas right there that's yeah oh no we, yeah, we <laughs> have that in los angeles too um yeah, I mean, like, touring is great, you know, like, camaraderie, you know, traveling, all that stuff is fun, but, like, the real reason is for that, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the tour that we play every night. I mean, like, that's that's why we're that's why we're here, play, Speak share our music with the world. Yeah. And speaking of touring, do you have a favorite gig you've played so far? Favorite gig? Or we can start off also with, like, the not-so-favorite gigs. Kind of just want to... Keep I on mean, the back of your head. I know I'm like letting you revisit your past. <coughs> oh, bless you. Ooh, hey, thank you. Uh, I don't know that I can think of one favorite gig or one least favorite gig, but favorite gigs probably would fall under the tours we've done with uh, Tool and Meshuggah and Mastodon. Yeah. Those were all pretty cool. Heavy Giants. Yeah. yeah. Least favorite gigs are, you know, in the earlier days where we would play for like 10 people and sleep on kitchen floors and lose a bunch of money and get sick and be miserable. But, but hey, it's hey, it's all rock and roll, man. You can't hey, man, have one without the other. I guess it's part of the experience. Now, I mean, exactly. from you know, touring with Meshuggah and Mastodon, those <laughs> yeah. those bands, and then you know, I mean, yeah. every band has to start off with a certain sort of yeah. You know, you got to struggle to get to where you oh, want yeah. to get. Oh you know? yeah, we we're still hey, struggling. sixteen we're years. Still that's, struggling. That's, that's yeah. not an accident, man. You guys no. are you guys are making your way. So yeah, I mean, you guys are the reason that gives me a purpose to do what I do. So awesome, I, man. I appreciate that for the <laughs> music. Cheers, cheers to that. Now your sixth album, Fluid Existential Inversions. It's out on Metal Blade, have you guys all were always with Metal Blade? Or no, was no, it like... it's our first album on Metal Blade. We um... interesting before you answer that because mm -hmm. Cult of Luna, this is also their first album, with yeah. a new one with Metal Blade. Yeah, so it's Metal kind of Blade's a, fucking coming, awesome. Coming out party, big party. plug for Metal Blade. We love them. So, what's your um, anything different? You guys, no, actually, before I say that, because on one of your interviews, you said uh, every one of your albums has a certain musical concept that's repeated throughout the album. Yeah, there's right? not not always one concept but there are always like a theme there are always like a couple of themes like you know we don't do a lot of riff stacking you know we don't like to do that so like we'll take like every song has like one or two musical ideas that we expand upon but a lot of times we will reintroduce some of those musical ideas in other songs so there's not necessarily like a musical theme that runs through all the albums but there are definitely like repeated musical motifs i guess you could say was it the same thing with this new record that's yeah. coming out in front yeah of you? if you listen to it enough you'd be like wait a minute like is that a variation of a riff from that song well you know 20 minutes ago yeah. and the answer is yes and uh i like to do that do you have a favorite song off the new record <sighs> Ooh, favorite song i don't know it's coming out in uh three days 
Uh, can I pick two? Yeah, of course you can pick okay, two. Okay, so how about Speaking of Orbs Okay. is one of my favorites. And maybe I'll say the last song, Sour Everything. Okay. <laughs> Those are the two that you picked I have not heard yet, so I'll make sure yeah. to pop that in on the way Yeah, home. you got the new album, right? Yeah, I did. There right there, man. And, um, uh, speaking of Orbs, is the last song we played tonight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'll make sure I hear that. Yeah, yeah. So, Takes a couple of spins to sit in. Now, now, I, I want to talk about your your specific influences. I know every and every band has like a different individual that has like they're growing up. But, sure, yeah. Like your personally, like, what about you? Like, what did you grow up on? You know, I grew up on the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Guns N' Roses. Check, 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 dare check. I dare I say Motley <laughs> Crue? Yeah, I don't know right. if that's cool to say anymore, but um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's I could I could start listing a bunch of bands, but those are like my earliest musical memories. I think um, I met Joe in sixth grade, and wow. he got me into yeah. We started playing music together in sixth grade. I believe okay. that. So we've known each other for twenty six years, um, and we were listening to a lot of like. Nine Inch Nails yeah. and Joe like, Lester, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Alice in Chains. That's okay. a huge one for me. Yeah. yeah. Do you still derive like all those influences into the records you write? Yeah, okay. always. And yeah. how does the process work when between the four of you and when it comes to writing a record? Uh, it's a combination of things. Um, both Sasha and myself uh, bring a lot of like just basic like musical ideas to the table, kind of like rough sketches of songs, maybe with like some program drums or something like that and we kind of send them around everyone listens so we start with like some basic like riffs and formats for a song but then everyone listens to it then we get into the practice space and we kind of turn it inside out and it becomes something you know entirely new so it's different every time but i'd say that it normally starts with some rough musical ideas uh from either sasha or myself lyric wise lyrics i write uh, all the lyrics yeah. um, and there's no real rhyme or reason to it like it's uh, you know Valley of Smoke that record was like a concept record about yeah. Los Angeles but other than that like the song uh, you know the the stuff that the lyrically what the songs are about range from dreams or nightmares I've had to like a specific uh, thing that I'm gonna write a song about you know there's not really like every time it's different you know there's not really like a a format that I follow or that any of us follow. We kind of just see where the music takes us. Speaking of where this, like seeing where the music takes you, how do you feel about your fans? You know how you guys start off with just the heavy, kind of like just got the girl vocals and yeah. kind of just added on the singing towards yeah. the mid part of your career. You know how some people say, oh, this band start off with this and now they're switching up all oh, they're selling out now they're like yeah. trying to be like what, what's your opinion on that are you seeing new fans now oh for sure and you guys just kick yeah. off the kick off one the thing i'd today. say to anybody that could ever say we're selling out i would invite them to uh check out my bank account and we'll see <laughs> i don't think that we're selling out uh, we're not selling anything um yeah of course like you know going from only like just being basically like super technical metal with with scream vocals to start to write like more like songs with with singing and harmonies and stuff like for in our opinion you know for every one fan that is like you know oh um i don't like those guys anymore now they have clean singing or they're writing yeah. you know songs and you hear for, that all the time for every one of them there's five to ten more people that might not have ever gotten into our music that do so those people can fuck off um you know <laughs> like what you like if you don't like what we're doing you know there's plenty of other music out there but we're, we're, we're doing what we love and it makes us feel very good anytime you know our fans are into it so and you said it was over time it came about being better songwriters than just just being technical like you yeah. said so yeah and, and you mentioned about the band being a fully democratic band how mm -hmm. each individual gets to actually chip in their own ideas on oh, the yeah. record you guys did justice with Alex getting him as a drummer for this record yeah my gosh yeah. some of the best drumming I've heard period he's pretty ridiculous how'd you guys end up finding him and how did you invite him on to you okay will well, he be a full-time or maybe you can't say that right well now. the thing is he can't really do much touring uh, with us because he has his other commitments so um, we have uh, Matt Lynch playing drums with right. us on tour right now who's played on the new cynic record 
and he's played in a band called Trio Scapes with Dan Briggs from Between the Buried and Me, and I mean, he's a killer. Yeah. Um, we're still kind of in limbo right now with the drumming situation, you know, like we're, it's, I mean, we just met Matt, he learned all our songs, he's killing it so far. He lives in Atlanta, but you know, nothing's, nothing's for sure right now other yeah. than we're gonna continue on because we love what we do. Now, speaking of love, loving what you do, do you have any other outside activities that feature creativity within the band? That's um, not related to maybe music. Yeah, I mean, everybody kind of has other stuff they do on the side. I mean, Sasha obviously has a very successful guitar Dumbling building guitars, company. Yeah. Um, I train and teach Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Awesome. Um, Joe's got a lot of stuff going on. So, I mean, you know, anytime anyone asks, like, where does inspiration come from? I would just say from everywhere, you know, like from life, uh, you know, it's music. Music is just kind of like a, a, a conduit for expressing, you know, our, our collective emotions. So we all bring our own uh, aspirations and baggage to the table. And it's just kind of when it's all said and done, it becomes intronaut. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Out of all four of you guys. Well, I know the drummers, you know, you guys are still freaking that out. Uh -huh. Who's the most serious and who's the probably the funniest? <laughs> <laughs> or am I talking to that individual right now? <laughs> uh, the most serious. And the, uh, I don't know that. I mean, like, we're all pretty on the same page with our sense of humor. <laughs> um, if any serious might not be the right word, but if one of us is like the most like responsible, it's definitely Sasha. Uh, <laughs> We used to joke around and call him dad, uh, which <laughs> yeah. he hates. Um, but, uh, you know, we all kind of are able more or less to flip the switch. You know, when we're yeah. serious, when it's, we take our music very seriously, but we don't take ourselves very seriously. So you'll catch us all having a good old laugh uh, anytime we're not on stage. I feel like that's okay when it comes to, you know, being a band on the road. I mean, oh yeah, I mean, if you don't have, if you take yourself too seriously, then you're a fucking asshole and no one wants yeah. to be around you, so. Oh yeah, we that's probably not... wouldn't be doing what we are doing right now. Exactly, if yeah. We were taking yeah. shit seriously. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, just a couple more questions. You sure, mean, man. So, you guys just started off this tour with Emma Ruth Rundle, who just played an amazing set. Mm -hmm. You guys played an amazing set of your own. She's incredible. Cult Love of Luna is about to headline, you know. it's how, how does it feel? Does it feel like starting like a brand new chapter, new decade, new album, first tour, almost like a refreshing Yeah, I mean, for, for, for us, it feels really good to be back out on the road. I mean, like I said earlier, it's been four years since we've toured, which isn't even that long for most bands, but for us it feels like an eternity because we've never gone that long. Is it the longest span of time of album releases? Oh yeah, yeah, by far, yeah. I mean, we had a lot of, you know, we each had to kind of like, after the last album and all the touring we did, all of us kind of had to take a couple steps back, you know, it, when we were in our 20s and we were just touring, none of us had any commitments back home, none of us had anything we cared about except hitting the road. So yeah. when we all kind of grew up a little bit and all started working on other things in our lives we had to kind of step away and focus on some of that stuff and you know obviously we had you know trials and tribulations with uh danny our last drummer um and we wish him no ill will but you know it is what it is so all of us kind of coming back together and having a conversation like hey like do we want to do this like because let's not like phone it in and just like hey let's sort of do it again we all really had to like sit down and decide like if we're gonna keep doing this like let's let's rediscover our our passion for why we do this in the first place and so now like even though the drumming situation is still you know up in the air the three of us me Joe and Sasha are we've never been more inspired and so like it's been a long time from between the last record and this one but it won't be that long between this one and the next one. We've already got a lot of new music cooking and uh, we're Intronaut 2.0 right now, so we're, we're good to go. Well, the next question was gonna be, what are your plans after the tour? But I, I think you kind of have that yeah, set. But yeah, the, the, as soon as, I mean, we've got a lot of stuff going on this year. We're playing some awesome festivals and yeah. some more touring news coming up later on in the year. I um, believe you guys just got added to that, uh, which, yeah. with, with, with Opeth is headlining. Yeah, the um, Arc Tangent Festival yeah, in the yeah. UK. Yeah, I saw the lineup. Yeah, we're, it's pretty killer, right? We're also playing uh, also with Opeth at the Domination Fest in Mexico City. That's like Def Leppard, Opeth, wow. uh, Rancid, uh, Man, and a bunch of other bands. 
Uh, we're going to India again. It'll be our third time in India. I've um, never been to India. I was born in Bangladesh. But were you really? I, yeah, I've, I've never been to India. Oh, that's though. awesome. So I studied tabla for a long time. <laughs> Are you serious? And, and my tabla teacher was from Kolkata, and he spent. He, I think he grew up in Bangladesh. Yeah, my uh, my family were we're all musicians, and uh, my my dad's a tabla player. Nice. So, and I think oh, awesome. Too. My uncle plays the drums actually. So oh, cool. We're all we're all musicians. Yeah, family, the so. first time we went to India, we played one of our old songs called "The Reptilian Brain" that has a bunch of tabla on it, and it was it was surreal. I was playing tabla. <laughs> in front of like 5,000 Indian people and they were like, where the fuck <laughs> Dude, did you learn how to play tabla? Dude, they go crazy, yeah. don't they? The crowd, you yeah. see the dynamic difference yeah, between... Yeah, I mean, we, we went there for the first time in 2010, I want to say, and we were just thinking like, okay, like, this will be, go be fun, but like, how cool could it possibly be? And it was the coolest thing we've ever done. And then we went back again, so now we're going back. Uh, in fact, after this tour, we'll be home for like five days and then we go back to play uh, the Bangalore Open Air Festival. So Dude. they love us in India, and we hey. love them. So hey, we love here in the states. Yeah. I hope. Shout out to India. You guys yeah. need to. Yeah, shout out to India also. <laughs> hey, come back to Dallas as. Often. Oh, we always you do. Know, it's, we always and, do. And we hey, never miss I mean, Dallas. I'm sure I'll see you guys in Los Angeles. So I mean, yeah, I'm we'll be there. there. So we'll be waiting for you. All right. I guess I should actually. You want know two more questions? I was going to say one more, but um, your favorite. Okay, this you can go all out for this one. Go your ahead. favorite artist period that you haven't collaborated with that you would like to. Does not have to be metal. Uh, it wouldn't be metal. <laughs> I, metal, like I've had enough metal. Um, favorite that we haven't collaborated with. Yeah. That we would love to. Okay. My first response was going to be anyone from Tool, but we have collaborated with some of the guys from Tool. Justin Chancellor was on one of our records. Um, Which one? Uh, he on the album Valley of Smoke. The song Valley of Smoke uh, is the second to last song on the record, okay. and it's has two drum sets and two basses and tabla. So I play drums, uh, I'm also a drummer, so I play drums, Danny played drums, Joe played bass, and Justin from Tool played bass as well. Um, and uh, I actually played drums in a side project with Justin. Um, so I can't use the Tool guys, but another collaboration. <laughs> Ooh, gosh, that's tough, that man. That kind of just blew my mind. Yeah, I want to say maybe like, uh, oh God, that's really hard. Put me on the spot with this one. How about Ooh, how about Zakir Hussein? Hey Zakir, if you're listening, bring that Tabla Thunder into the internet world. Oh, and besides Zakir Hussein, cool Keith. Cool Keith. Cool wow. Keith. Wow, Dr. Lovers. Octagon, Dr. Doom, um, Black Elvis. Alright, so if you okay, so last question. If you weren't a musician, what would you be doing right now? I'd be back home teaching and training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu like I already do. All right. But I am a musician, so <laughs> here I am drinking beers and getting in all sorts of trouble. Sweet. That's the red light blinker. All Dave, right. thanks for your time, bro. Thank you so much. You will have a great tour. Go kill it. Go crush it. I can't wait to see you guys again. I can't wait to I hear I promise this to record. do my best. All right. Cheers, bro.